Today's video was sponsored by Pop Culture Zone Pressing Services. If you need your comic books pressed, I personally vouch for Pop Culture Zone as being one of the best professional companies in the game, offering hands down the lowest prices out there. Services start at only $9.99, and every order place will receive free fast track turnaround times. Even though I press comics for my personal collection, whenever I need a professional press for my key comics, I send them off to Pop Culture Zone and every single book that I've received back, every single one has had results that have exceeded my expectations and I am sure that they will exceed your expectations as well. Make sure you go check the link in the description below to head over to their website, popculturezone.com for complete details on services and how to begin your order. What is going on everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture. It's been a while, a long while since I've done a video like this. Today we're going to look at a situation where an individual is trying to sell 11,000 comic books in one lot. And we're going to dive into this, but before we do, I want to let everyone know I am not here to bash anyone. I'm not here to mock anyone. I want to have fun with this, but I'm really wanting to dive into a critical thinking aspect. That's what I always like you guys to do whenever I bring up uh, topics of discussion on my channel. I want to look at the context of what's going on. I want to put my opinion out there. And then, of course, I want to ask all of you, what are your thoughts on this matter? If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, please take the time to do so. Of course, check out all the awesome links below as well but let's get right into this so here we are uh in a comic book facebook group and again i'm not here to to bash anybody this is a public forum so therefore we are just addressing what is already made public uh, now this is a post from an individual that is trying to sell eleven thousand comics you guys can see right here uh the individual says right here it says never been read retail value 50k selling as one lot at wickham i guess that's the location that they're at and it says down here in the the description twenty five thousand dollars eleven thousand comics all from the 1980s sold as one bundle twenty five thousand dollars folks twenty five thousand dollars so I am going to be asking the question, would you pay $25,000 for the slot? But let's dive into it. First off, let's look at these pictures and let's see what this individual is selling. Now, the first thing that I noticed when I saw this post is these books are sitting in what looks to be some type of warehouse with no bags and no boards stacked up against each other. Let's go ahead and look at these pictures here. Uh, can't see much there, but you could see like these old like old shelving display units, not display units, but old shelving units with just the raw books sitting there. No protection. Here we go. All right, so what you see here is, I mean, oh my goodness. This is all one issue. So you could tell that this is probably, I don't know if this individual had a store at some point, but this looks like about, you know, 80 copies of, of one issue. These are all one issue right here, it looks like. All one issue. And uh, look at, you can see from up here, look at this. These edges look so fringed. Is that the proper word? Just completely worn, even from not even zooming in. But all stuff from, from this looks like the, the early to mid, this is mid 80s here, obviously, because you could tell by the, the logo. You got thing books here. Can't really tell what, what these are. Uh, Spider-Man logo, definitely, you know, it's after 84 because you could see the the, the black Spider-Man logo. Uh, so these books are probably roughly from uh, maybe uh, 85. I don't see the 25th anniversary, which would have been 86. Let's go to the next one here. Again, these books are just stacked on top of each other. And you can see from these right here, they're all stacked with a spine on one side. There's obvious spine stress, how these are sitting. And they've probably been sitting here for decades. Uh, here's some Marvel tail stuff. Uh, we got some Iron Man stuff. Again, mid-80s mid stuff. Iron Man stuff. Look, look, you can tell that these, these edges are just 
worn on a lot of these. You can see without even zooming in, you got some, you got some Avengers stuff down here from the mid '80s. Uh, you got some dollar bin stuff, US one here. But you know, you got some legacy runs. I see a looks like a Thor issue right there. New Mutants right here. Avengers and of course all this Iron Man. And again, these are all one issue that are stacked. Uh, again, you could see how badly there's spine stress on these books from sitting like that. And it looks like it's all Marvel stuff. You got some ROM stuff right here. Oh my God, look at that. You could see the spine stress on these pretty badly there. This is this looks like maybe some, uh, some more Marvel Tales, uh, some reprint stuff. Look at all that sitting there. Light, the light is shining right down on them. No, no protection from the UV light. I don't know if there's windows in here. It looks like maybe a storage shed. So who knows what the you know what, what the humidity is, what the heat or cool is 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 doing in this room for for decades upon decades. Because I'm gonna assume that these have been sitting here from the mid 1980s. Uh, more stuff here. Again, similar situation. Got some Captain America books down here. But just look look at these. You can see right here. Look at how they, there's definitely some, some warping going on. These are not sitting flat right there. Uh, so it looks like the environment has been getting to these books for sure. Uh, you could tell that the pages are... Uh, I, I mean, these pages, when the books were brand new, were never white, white. But there's definitely some... Looks to be some uh, just standard air oxidation going on to the pages where there is slight discoloring going on. A little bit of off-whiting to the pages. Uh, some Conan books. Lots of Conan books. Like this whole rack is Conan. That's Hulk down here. You got some Hulk books. So again, looks like mostly Marvel stuff. There we go. Power Man and Iron Fist. Fraggle Rock. Yeah, you can see from this picture right here. You can see. Look at this. It just... It's a bit concerning how these uh, are, are looking... Uh, look at how these ones are warped up. Look at the edges of this are just sitting warped up. So again, that that's alluding to me that the there's probably uh, extreme temperatures in this storage unit. So probably during the summer it gets really hot and maybe it gets cold uh, during the winter. And this this warping that you see right here is is coming from that from the different temperatures and different uh, moisture in the air is is changing. Uh, the the particles within the, the paper. Got some books laying on the floor, just stacked all of on the floor. All right, so so that's that is uh, the pictures, folks. Never been read. Here's my take on this. This person is asking twenty five thousand dollars, and you can see in in an, another comment where he said ten thousand to eleven thousand books. All right, so let's just hypothetically say that there's roughly 10,000 here. That's $2.50 per book. Now, of course, there's not 11,000 or 10,000 different books. There are obviously sometimes probably close to 100 of the same title. So you got to understand, who would want to buy these books? It would have to be somebody that is a reseller or a dealer that can be able to take these, these books in bulk and be able to sell them. No collector is going to want to have 10,000 plus books laying around where you have hundreds of copies of the same, same book. Nobody collects like that. At least nobody that I've known in my collecting of 35 years. If you collect like that, let me know. Especially buying these books at $2.50 a book. So already, as somebody for me who, who is in the market to would buy bulk, would buy wholesale, and would put a, a, a fair offer out there, even for myself, I wouldn't pay nowhere close to $25,000 for these books. And here's why. One, the biggest concern is what I said when we were looking at the pictures. Uh, these books do not have a retail value of 50K. Uh, I don't know if you're talking about cover price, and he's estimating cover price. Uh, but even so, that that's that's not the case because these books are from the 80s. Most of them are going to have 60 cent to 75 cent cover price on them. So retail value is going to be much less than the amount of books. It's going to be somewhere around probably 
six to seven thousand dollars. So I, I think he's saying retail meaning secondary market value, fair market value. So he's saying that the fair market value of these books is at two dollars and fifty cents a piece. Now look, I'm not gonna necessarily argue with that overall because a lot of these books, especially if you look at your Iron Man's from that time period, you look at your Captain America's, your Hulk's, and in all those legacy runs. If they're in decent condition, they don't need to be high grade condition. You can absolutely sell these books for two, three, four, five bucks a pop. You can, but re this isn't resale. This individual is not, excuse me, this isn't retail. This individual is not selling a retail lot. He's selling in wholesale. No collector that is willing to pay a quote unquote retail, or should I say secondary market, fair market value for these books is going to pay $2.50 for 10,000 plus books at that price for multiple copies of single issues. All right, we're not going to go through the comments and, uh, you know, we're not going to, again, put a bunch of people on blast. Uh, some people get cynical and and uh, even though I may agree with them, that's, that's not what we're here for, again. But some people were like, no bags and boards, savage. You know, but I left an initial comment saying, look, Stored since the 1980s, no bags and boards, obvious, obvious wear and tear because of that spine stress on all the books. I'll give you $8,000 cash. I'll give you $8,000 cash. That's what I offered. And that's a serious offer from me. It would be. Now, what I would do is I would take these books and I would probably press and clean some of them that I felt were worthy of a present clean. And then, you know, I could definitely make it at, at $8,000. I'm roughly paying 80 cents a book, which is, again, I, I think that's way, way more than fair. Um, I could probably most definitely sell them for, for $2.50 each. But you got to also think of this. It, it would take me years to move, to move the, this product. It would take somebody years to move this amount of inventory. So if you think of anybody that's a reseller or a dealer, they would need to, if they're putting out $8,000 in cash, they're going to need to make that money back at least. And I would say in a matter of a couple of months. And if you don't do that, you're losing out. You're losing money for your business. So what this individual said in the comments, he kept posting. I said, he, he, he responded to my comment saying, Sorry, this lot isn't for you. Uh, I sell 120 to 140 books a day on eBay. And then in other comments below, he was listing his find me on eBay. And his eBay name was something something for profit. So obviously he hears, he's here to make a profit. And that's that's not a bad thing. Anybody in business needs to be make, needs to uh, make a profit. But I thought it was kind of ironic. So and he put multiple comments down below with like just retyping in his eBay store name. And I realized what this individual is doing, in my humble opinion, if I had to play detective. This individual knows most likely that he would never get $25,000 for these books. But he got people's attention and he wants to lead people to his eBay store. And what I responded to him was, well, I said, you know, look, and I told him, I said, a collector, first off, a collector, most collectors don't have $25,000 sitting around just to buy. And if they did, I guarantee you, they're not buying a wholesale lot of random 80s run fillers where you have 80, 50, 100 copies of, of one issue. They're going out and buying Hulk 181s or, you know, Silver Age keys or or a handful of Silver Age and Bronze Age keys and, and, and uh, uh, blue chip keys if they had $25,000 to spend. Nobody in their right mind would buy this. And if you're a dealer or a wholesaler, um, you, you spent quarters to the dollar. My 8K offer was way beyond, like I said, a, a, a fair offer. Now, here's the biggest issue that I take with this as well. Now that I know this individual has an eBay store and he's pushing his eBay store on this post, for me, that tells me without doubt, it tells me without doubt, this lot has been cherry picked. I guarantee you there is not one key book in this lot. And when I say key, I even mean books probably worth 
20 to $30. Because he's already pulled those out and sold them. If he has a WandaVision, uh, 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 Vision and Scarlet Witch number one that's selling for like, what, $12 now because of the show. I guarantee you, he's cherry picked it. If he has a Marvel Tales 141, which even in this condition of these books would sell for, you know, probably 40 bucks. He's cherry picked it. If he even has certain books that have gotten hot lately, like a Fantastic Four 353, the first appearance of Mobius M. Mobius that's maybe selling for what? I don't know. In this condition, 10 bucks. He's cherry picked it. He has cherry picked any book that has any type of, of key value to it. And what he said in some of his replies as well is this. I, I sell the I could sell these books for three to four dollars all day on, on eBay. Well, again, more power to you. But the people that are buying these books for three to four dollars on eBay are collectors that need individual issues for their runs, for their collection, and they're willing to pay the three to four dollars for one to two to three books. They're not willing to pay close to that same amount for 80 copies of Iron Man 305 or something, or Marvel Tales 220 for 50 copies of that book, or for 40 copies of ROM number 82. Nobody is doing that. So what's the point of me making this video, you guys may ask. Some of you may, may be, oh, you're just here to complain and to troll. That's not the case. I'm not even putting this guy's name out there. I'm not putting anyone on blast. I just find it really interesting as a talking point and as a subject matter. What are people's thoughts when they do stuff like this, when they post stuff like this? And at the end of the day, I think, like I said, I think this is a marketing scheme to get people over to his eBay store. So, hey, like, it's, it's, um, it's a creative scheme. And look, if somebody takes the bait, more power to him, but I can guarantee you that people aren't going to take the bait. I guarantee you people aren't going to take the bait and, and purchase this, this a lot. But uh, I just, I find it very intriguing on what people do. And also for, for, for you viewers, uh, the reason why I talk about these things is because if you guys are sellers or, uh, you know, collectors that just purchase things, uh, and may be interested in something like this, I want to give you my advice. If you guys are sellers and think about maybe buying in bulk and thinking, is this worth it? Is this something that's worth it for $25,000 or anything close to that? Maybe I could throw them an offer of 20000 Is that even worth it? I'm just here to give you my personal opinion and advice. And uh, really, when it comes down to the business sense, I, as a retailer, unless I knew Unless I went to the warehouse and examined the books and was able to go through the collection and see, okay, here's here's a little bit of a of, of a of a key book that can sell for maybe 20 bucks or 15 bucks. If I actually knew what was there and it wasn't just a blind buy according to these few pictures, I was able to feel the books, I was able to measure the the damage, you know, or uh, of them sitting for 30 plus years with no bags and boards. May hey, I might I might be willing to take my offer of 8k up but as a blind offer i would spend no more than 8k and even that is gonna put me out thousands of dollars hoping hoping that i could sell these books at just two to three dollars a piece and make my money back in a matter of like a few months but i don't even have a retail sale uh, store to do that so it, it would be a lot of work you know going on the whatnot app or listing on eBay, creating smaller lots and stuff like that. So it would be workable at that price, but I would not budge above 8K. So those are my thoughts on this very, very interesting situation here. I would absolutely love to hear what you guys think. What would you pay for this lot? Would you buy it as a collector? Would you buy it as a dealer? Do you think that you would never even touch 11,000 books that have been sitting like this for 30 plus years? Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Be well, everyone. And again, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. And until next time.